I'm going to review a Batman graphic novel called Long Halloween. After 79 years of Batman, there are a lot of comics. If I had to guess, roughly 7,000 or so. And with that many comes a variety of quality. There are some bad ones like Batman Odyssey and some great ones like The Dark Knight Returns. But to me, there is one that stands far above the rest and that is Batman The Long Halloween. This is a long story, so I might have to skip over some parts, but I'm going to give you the general sense of the story. This story takes place in Gotham, a city with a serious organized crime problem, and it also has a lot of crazies running around, for example the Joker. At the beginning, Batman makes an alliance with Commissioner Jim Gordon and District Attorney Harvey Dent to try to take down the biggest crime family in Gotham, the Falcones. Sort of like Al Capone. Anyway, at the end of the first chapter, Carmine Falcone's nephew is shot in his bathtub on Labor Day. This sparks the start of the serial killer known as Holiday. Holiday kills only on major holidays. On Thanksgiving, for example, Holiday kills five of Carmine's best friends. As you can tell, the attacks are aimed at the Falcone family. Carmine thinks that it is his rival, Sal Maroney, doing the hits, and a gang war starts. So Harvey, Jim, and Batman have to catch a killer before the city becomes a war zone. During the gang war, Sal Maroney is arrested and sent to court, where Harvey Dent tries to prosecute him. During the trial, Harvey's assistant slips Maroney a bottle of acid, where in court, the acid is thrown in Dent's face. It sears only one side of him, causing him to look like this. Harvey, in his rage, eventually snaps and becomes the psychopath known as Two-Face, who is out for revenge on the crime families. While this is happening, Gordon and Batman catch the Holiday Killer, and it is revealed to be someone Falcon trusts, and someone who is supposed to be dead. After Holiday pleads guilty to all charges, Harvey Dent figures out there are two Holiday Killers because the one that they caught is, is you know, supposed to be dead, meaning that the attempt on his life uh, failed, and he faked his own death. At the end of the book, the second Holiday Killer is revealed. Throughout the book, you have no idea who Holiday is, and there are subtle clues but none you would pick up on on your first read. This drives the book's main theme, and while the book may be subtle about its clues and hints, it's not about its theme. The theme is the duality of man. This is present in almost every character in the book. Harvey Dent struggles with upholding the law without breaking it, Gordon struggles with being the commissioner while trying to raise a baby. Batman tries and fails to be the symbol of hope Gotham needs as he struggles with thinking that Harvey is Holiday. Then there's the prime examples of this, the two Holiday killers. The first Holiday killer, Alberto Falcone, Carmine Falcone's son, pretended to like his father while being Holiday. And the second Holiday killer, Gilda Dent, Harvey's wife becomes Holiday to knock off the Falcones so that her husband didn't have to work so hard. But in the end, Harvey's obsession with catching everyone, including Holiday, costed him his sanity. One of the great things about this Batman story is that while Batman is the protagonist, this isn't his story. This is the story of Harvey Dent's downfall. Harvey is a sympathetic character who only wanted to make Gotham a safer place. He also felt like a failure because Batman would catch these guys, but he couldn't keep a witness alive long enough to testify. This book has the luxury of being a comic book. It doesn't have to waste time describing the surroundings, it can just focus on dialogue and thought. This allows the book to be able to flush out every character even the smaller ones like Jim's wife Barbara. So the main characters feel like real people with real emotions. And the writers never sacrifice character consistency for the sake of the plot. Even if the action is done out of character, there is a motivation for that character conveyed through narration by that character and the drawing provided for us. After all, the theme of the book would be hard to convey through words. The emotions just wouldn't be there. The drawings, while it takes a bit of getting used to, 
convey character emotions perfectly. Like during the scene when Joker breaks into Harvey's house, the emotion of Harvey really makes you feel bad for him. This book, no matter how bad the character, you can find something you like in them. It is a character driven story and every beat of the story leads to the next and the next. And the book actually really makes you think. And that is why I think this is the best Batman comic of all time.